kindergartners love to say, when I grow up, I want to be a ballerina or the president or an astronaut. But I, I really do want to be an astronaut. Sally Ride Science is a company formed in 2001 by Sally Ride, the first female astronaut from America, and her colleagues, Tam O'Shaughnessy, Terry McEntee, Alan Lopes, and me. The motivation for the company and our mission was to inspire young people, and particularly females and underrepresented minorities in science, technology, engineering and math, which is referred to as STEM, and to really promote STEM literacy. The link between UC San Diego and Sally Ride Science was just happenstance in some respects, and timing is everything, and I think that falls into the legacy of Sally Ride herself. When she actually picked up a newspaper at Stanford as an undergrad, it was timing, and the first time she could actually look in the paper and see, wow, there's an ad here, they're looking for astronauts. For us here at UC San Diego, the timing was also perfect because there was an opportunity after she passed away, the for-profit company, the legacy of Sally Ride, was looking for a home. After long discussions and all the things that go into uh, merging in a for-profit company into UC San Diego, we now have her home here. And our job is to be the custodians of a legacy that she built and beyond. When Sally Ride Science was first launched at UC San Diego, uh, I immediately started getting emails from female undergraduates about how could they get involved. These students were persistent <laughs> and they demanded a meeting finally. So I said, Ed, okay, we're gonna meet with them. We went around the room and each one talked about how they, why, why they were a STEM major. All of them around the room said it was somebody in their life that told them that this was something they could do and that the field was for them. And they all talked about a, a, maybe a summer school session or a hands-on workshop where they actually got to play and tinker. And Ed and I looked at each other and we said, this is our mission. This is what we want to establish. These are the programs. We have to get these students involved. Before coming to UCSD, I was a huge space geek. I loved everything about it. And I had known about Sally Ride for a very long time, being the first American female astronaut. She inspired me, but not just me, obviously, just countless girls across the country to do something and reach for the unimaginable. So we can show you some of our books that we have. So this is about what the field is and what someone working in environmental science is doing. I had known Christine from my freshman year, and a couple of months later she posted on the internet that she was starting this new club, Tritons for Sally Ride Science, and I just thought it was an amazing opportunity. Sally Ride has been an inspiration of mine from a very young age. And I thought, wow, like science and volunteering and getting to help the community, like it was just a perfect storm, I guess. When I was sitting in my AP physics class in high school, there was probably um, 20 people in our class out of which maybe two were girls, which is crazy because um, I don't think girls are any less uh, intelligent in terms of math and science and other and creative aspects as well. So I think it's really important to show girls that um, they can do this and that uh, there's so many cool opportunities that they shouldn't let uh, like gender or some kind of stereotype uh, set them back. I knew that there was really a need for an organization like this to not only make STEM more interesting, but to make it more attainable and to make it more friendly. They now have over 100 members. They have a core group that are actively involved. You, you, you can't stop these students. Their passion is what I call paying it forward. You know, they, they're happy with their field. They, they are so excited about their career and they want to inspire the next generation. So they're helping with our Junior Academy. The Junior Academy is a very exciting program. It was a partnership actually with the San Diego Unified School District in which we wanted to take and put the science that we have embedded in Sally Ride Science and put it out into the community so many, many young mid-schoolers and high schoolers can come in to learn from some of the best teachers. 
all of the instructors are coming from different areas of science. And uh, for example, in a couple of my classes, I talk about Scripps expeditions that I've been on. We are on an expedition to the Mariana Trench and help them picture themselves there. What's it like to be at sea on a big ship? And uh, what are the skills? Where are the jobs going to be in 10 years? So um, with all of that information, we present to them a whole array of skill sets and talents and things and then let them think about what they like and create in their minds, start the process of what would their dream career be like. I think it's important to start STEM education with younger kids, like middle schoolers, high schoolers, because it's important to start this development process for them to feel that they're more capable than they are and they have more time to explore their options. For us, it's more the younger the student, the better outcome we could help them determine what they want to do with their career. Really the overall thing that we're trying to do is try to, to hit that sweet spot between science and math. There's a lot of people that are science track and they're going to go there, arts track and they're going to go there. But there's a sweet spot in the middle where you can play on both sides and really strengthen both. So it's about science and art, the combination and the magical things that happen when you're there. I'm teaching an introduction to circuits using this thing called Makey Makey. Um, it's a circuit board that helps you convert conductive objects into functional keys that are on your keyboard. Within the STEAM field, there aren't as many females, and we're just trying to get them interested and keep them engaged in wanting to learn more about science, technology, engineering, and in this case, electrical circuits, and just wanting to learn more about that. This is messy science. The idea is that we do not spend enough time making messes. We're taught to be clean, and definitely clean is useful and good at times, but a lot of the greatest discoveries happen when you basically follow the second law of thermodynamics and allow the world to go into entropy. So the activity we have today is we have a set of stream tables where people are learning about how rivers flow. In addition to this, we have an infrared camera right here. So this works by um, sensing infrared light. We can't see with our eyes, but this camera up here can. We're going to create what's known as an endothermic reaction, which mixing citric acid and baking soda. And what will happen is the reaction will actually absorb heat and cause the reactant product to cool down. And it'll be cooler in the surroundings. And we'll be able to watch it flow all over these stream tables both in visible and infrared light. This course is called Culinary Chemistry and Design. So we learn a few different uh, techniques of preparing food. We learn about vocabulary of food, what it means to um, be gluten-free, paleo, how to prepare for people with food allergies. But then the fun is the hands-on experimentation and exploration. Today we're making sugar art bowls. It's called fancy term molecular gastronomy. Uh, but that's basically designing different dishes. So you can put something into a sodium uh, alginate bath, algin, which comes from our ecosystem right off here in Southern California, the kelp forests, and combine that with different molecules and reactions to try to form these little spheres of food. So remember what they said is when it gets drained, you want to make sure to keep the water away from the sugar. Oh, wow. A success. <laughs> what this class is basically is talking about how science fiction has influenced scientific discovery and then how scientific discovery has influenced science fiction. So we talk about important um, plot development, character development, really getting rich characters involved and not relying just on kind of the flashy things in a story to make it interesting. So we're kind of combining some of their interests in science with what we're learning about good fiction writing. I want to be an oceanographer and study the mysteries of the ocean. My story is about these two people, their name are John and Bailey, and they got a job 
and they're like a deep sea exploration people and they're very on the day Josh got his first day of the job they went down to go look at the ocean and they found a spaceship half of a spaceship and they found out that it was a NASA spaceship Adjectives are the descriptive words, right? They describe a noun. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we've talked a lot about is just the creative thinking that's involved with combining the arts with STEM and how that just kind of expands their ability to think through all sorts of other topics. And also, it's being able to eloquently and clearly express your ideas is one of the most important things that I think students can be taught because it allows for their voice to be heard. And if they can't articulate that clearly, then, then their voice won't be heard. For the Junior Academy, the Tritons for Sally Ride Science are working one-on-one -on -one with these students that are primarily middle and high school girls in these workshops. So think about the interaction. Think about looking at them, somebody that's a little older than them, that's already established at a university, in a college major. They're their heroes. They're going to identify more with somebody closer in age to them than usually, you know, a professional that's older and has been in the field for long. So they serve as an inspiration for all of the students that attend our programs. I definitely am happy with how I've been able to work with the students. For me, it's just based upon my personal passion towards science and seeing the students that are kind of geared towards what I'm focused on is definitely, uh, there's a little bit of bias there. But uh, I have gotten to know a lot of students regardless of what class they're interested in. I have became friends with a lot of them, with the leaders, because I like to, I'm a person who's very social and I like to get to know people. <laughs> Catherine, she's nice and she hangs out with us at, at lunch and we always like laugh and have fun. I know Kylie has a bright future looking ahead of her. She's always interested in the materials and I can tell that she really wants to do something related to science. One of our um, like visions or goals for the next like couple of years is to get out and um, interact more with middle school and high school students, at, whether that be at the San Diego Public Library with workshops or um, getting students like here at UCSD. UC San Diego and the Public Library are both public goods. Taxpayers pay for them. And so a couple of years ago, we were looking about how can we take the essence and the instruction and the workshops that we do in Sally Ride Science and have it out in the community. Well, we realized early on that uh, we ran into uh, the librarians who were telling us, we have all these workshops, we have all these spaces that we can actually do programming and know their community well. But they said they have a problem because they didn't have instructors and resources to uh, book and schedule. And we had the opposite problem. We had an array of experts and these young undergraduates that are brilliant and some of our faculty and postdocs. It was a marriage made in heaven. Thanks to the leadership of the Public Library and UC San Diego Extension, San Diego students now have a way to supplement their education and really help boost their chances of getting into college. It's called the Library Next program. Library Next stands for Library of Network of Education Times Training. And what this is attempting to do essentially is bridge academics with workforce development. And so the marriage of our expertise and resources at UC San Diego with the locations throughout the city of library branches in which we can host on weekends and evenings. That is the, uh, really the whole goal is to inspire and infuse instruction and workforce development in library branches throughout our region. Now, an output of that is our new STEAM leadership series where we feature leaders in science and technology and other areas that are fields that we want ultimately to have young girls and boys to say, gosh, I could be that too someday. We want to be the farm system for the next generation of the most brilliant minds in the world.